All right, it is late March here in Colorado. We just got word that Chatfield is going to open this Saturday, March 25th. Today is Tuesday, the 21st, and we have got a lot to do. Um, lots of prep that needs to happen in order to get ready for the boat ramp. And I'm gonna walk you through just some basics of what I do to get my boat ready for spring walleye fishing. Um, not gonna talk as much about baits and lures, which I have a separate video about what to maybe prepare for for spring walleye in baits and lures, uh, but more transitioning to gear, making sure things are working, what maintenance items am I looking at, all of that stuff. So let's get into it right now. All right, so first things first, most of us have some sort of off switch for our boat that cuts all the power to the electronics. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is inspect the batteries and I'm gonna flip that switch and I'm gonna power on all of my electronics. I wanna make sure that everything electrically is sound and working on the boat. Um, so I'll test my horn, you know, I'll test my bilge, I'll test my lights, make sure my radio's working. Just see if you've had anything pop over the winter, any mouse get in there, or anything that could potentially ruin your wiring situation. The last thing you want to do is unload your boat on the dock and then go to turn the key and you have no power. So power is the first thing that I check. I've gone through all of my power. I looked at my batteries. My batteries are great. I even turned on my front trolling motor just to make sure that that works. I've got batteries in my remote for my front trolling motor that are charged and good to go. Um, so I've been through all the electronics on the boat, but you just kind of want to think about what electronics do you use every time you go fishing beside your fish finders uh, that you're going to need. So again, bilge pumps, um, live well pumps, uh, you're talking your front trolling motor, you're talking uh, whatever accessory lighting that you need, especially if you're night fishing. Uh, so check all of your electrical first. That's step number one. All right, step number two is going through your power. You want to make sure your motors are running in tip-top shape, or if they're not in tip-top shape, that you know why. Um, this could include filters. A lot of people will drain their lower unit um, and refill it at the end of the season. Some people wait till the beginning of the season, but check your lower unit. Um, the reason to do it at the end of the season is because if your motor is exposed to cold temperatures and there is water in your gearbox, it's gonna expand when it turns to ice and it can break things. So um, usually your lower unit fluid has been done. Uh, so you're usually looking at uh, filters, you're looking at new gasoline, you're looking at your spark plugs. You're just trying to make sure that these things are maintained. One small note that I'll make on this, I think a lot of guys think, uh, you know, my motor's not starting right, I'll just keep using, you know, starter fluid. Starter fluid's great for a motor that's been sitting for a long time that just needs a little bit of pep, or maybe it has some bad gas and it just needs a little more octane to kind of get itself pepped up um, and burn off some of that bad gas. But do not let your motor get hooked on starter fluid. It is like the crack cocaine for motors. You wanna make sure that you do not use it consistently because over time your motor will get used to needing that. Um, it burns up a whole lot of parts. It's not good for your engine. So please do not use starter fluid after your initial start of the season. I usually don't use it at all. This time my big motor took maybe I don't know, four or five cranking sessions to get it going. Um, my little motor, maybe a little bit more, um, but I didn't use any starter fluid. If the motors continue to have problems starting, that's more of a sign to change your carburetor out or look at your injectors or look at your spark plugs, um, but do not get your motor hooked on starter fluid to kind of cover over an underlying issue. So again, uh, very similar to the electrical issues, you do not wanna to get to the boat dock and have your engine not start and then have to load it back on the trailer uh, and go home and figure it out. So make sure your engines are running, especially a, a little tiller or kicker if you plan to troll with it. So now that most of the maintenance has been done, uh, a couple other items that I would talk about, uh, make sure if you have a two stroke, you've got oil. Uh, a lot of people will go out thinking that they have oil. At the boat dock, it's gonna cost you about four times what it would cost if you would have bought it previously. So make sure your boat has oil if it's a two stroke. If it's a four stroke, it's not a bad time to change the oil. Um, but depending on your boating use, you may be able to get a couple years out of it. Um, after that, I'm getting everything out, odds and ends, right? Ruler, 
You gotta have an 18 inch walleye here in Colorado, most lakes. So you need a ruler or a bump board, make sure you have that on board. It's gonna be a real bummer when you catch a nice fish that's kind of on the edge and you're not sure and uh, you gotta let it go because you don't wanna get in trouble by the DNR. So make sure that uh, you have a ruler, uh, pliers, scissors, everything you need for fishing tackle. I usually have mine up on a magnetic board here on the side of the boat, um, but just make sure that you don't forget that stuff. So I personally save this for the very end. Um, it just seems to me that like, this is kind of the last thing I always do before I go fishing because it gets me really hyped up to fish. Um, but just rigging your rods, checking all of your line, making sure everything's good from last year, making sure your line counters still work, all the important stuff. Um, this is literally going to drive you insane if you prep your entire boat and then you get out on the water and you're like, oh man, I forgot. I broke that rod. That's left in a bird's nest. This doesn't have a lure. I got to tie on a new leader here. So don't get on the water and cause yourself a bunch of havoc. Make sure you check all of your rods and reels and make sure that they're all set up and ready to go. So the first time you hit the water, all you have to do is put those in the rod holder and get to fishing. I have already done this. I prepped last year. Um, I had a late season trip and I wanted to make sure that it was all good to go. And it is. Um, so I actually don't need to do that this spring, but I will pull out the lead core rods when I'm ready to go lead core fishing during the day. And I will pull out the monofilament rods for my night fishing trips before I even leave the house. That way I don't even have to mess with this under rod box. I just lay them in the bottom of the boat. And when I get there, they are all tied up and ready to go. And I'm literally fishing within minutes of getting on the water. All right, and our last order of business brings us outside of the boat. I'm talking about trailer stuff. Um, one, make sure your trailer's registered. Uh, you don't wanna get pulled over and deal with that. Two, make sure your tires have air. One thing to tell you about trailer tires that you may or may not be aware of, a lot of trailer tires have a way higher PSI than what car tires have, and that's because they have a thicker wall for trailering heavier things. Sometimes they need a little bit more support. Um, so on my boat trailer, I would say my boat's probably clocking in around 4,800 pounds, something like that. Um, and then the trailer itself. So I might have a 6,000 pound rig here. Um, these guys, they'll blow up to 50 PSI cold. I have them set right now at about 45, just a little bit underneath that max. But make sure your trailer tires are blown up and good to go. Um, for any of the guys that live on maybe a an icier area, or maybe your winter sticks around a little bit longer. You may go with a little bit lower PSI because you get more grip on a steep boat ramp that way than you will with a more pumped up tire. Um, I'm of the, the thought process that I'd rather have more air and drain some out than have not enough. So make sure you pump up your tires. The last things I check are up near the front of the boat, my tongue. I have a foldable tongue, so I wanna make sure that those bolts are tight and then I'm not gonna have any problems trailering the rig. Make sure I have my chains, make sure my cord that plugs into my truck, all my lights work. Um, just getting a general assessment of my boat. Um, I have had it before where I pull my boat out of the lake. It's midnight, it's 1 a.m., it's 2 a.m., and I realize none of my trailer lights work and I gotta go all the way home. Um, very difficult situation. Do you leave your boat with all your tackle in it? Do you take it with you and just you know hope you don't get a ticket? Um, just check all that stuff before you have to deal with it. You do not want to be wiring your trailer at 2 a.m. in the morning because you know you got a 30, 30 mile drive home and you want to make sure that you get there safe. So um, just check some of the trailer stuff and think about uh, what your trailer has or might need, grease in the bearings or uh, air in the tires or something on you know maybe the winch on the front. Um, but just check and make sure things are operational. So once you get on the water, you can have the best time possible and you don't have to really think about anything except for getting out there and fishing. If you guys have any other things you'd like to add down below that I forgot, please add them down below and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the water this season. Thanks for watching Catching Colorado and good luck catching walleyes. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more relatable content, you can check out these videos right here. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can stay updated on our next adventures. Oh,